Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Respected viewers, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hello and welcome to the 36th episode of the Treaties of Rights series with me, your host, Ali Jassim. Today we will discuss the right of him who seeks your advice. Regarding this, Mam Sajjad Zain al-Abidin has said, and the right of him who seeks your advice is that you should exert all efforts to advise him if you can provide him with a good opinion and suggest to him to choose what you would have chosen if you were in his place. You should do so with mercy and with lenience, since lenience will eliminate fear while rudeness will eliminate friendliness. But if you do not have any good advice for him, you should refer him to someone else whom you know and trust his advice yourself. You should spare no efforts to guide him towards the good and do your best to advise him. And there is no power but in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In short, Muhammad Sajjad salam says that once someone seeks advice, a right is established for him. This right is clearly providing him with proper advice if we can or referring him to someone else whom we know and can provide him with some good advice. Consultation is one of the most important issues in Islam. It helps us get our affairs done in a more reasonable fashion. If we do not consult with others regarding our affairs, then our affairs will not be done in a perfect way since by ourselves we cannot consider all aspects of an issue no matter how intelligent we are. Once issues are presented for consultations and several experienced people use their intellect to help, then the job will be done more perfectly. Consultation is so important in Islam that even the Prophet, peace be upon him, who received divine revelations and was highly in intelligent, consulted with others and respected their views. This was done in order to establish consultation as a practice among Muslims. His consultations were related to public issues about the execution of divine rules and not on legislative issues. People who seek other people's advice regarding their affairs seldom fail. Others who consider themselves needless of other people's advice and do not do so and just rely on their own minds usually make mistakes even though they may be very intelligent. Such an attitude makes one unpopular and stops the flow of suggestions towards him. Those who consult others regarding their affairs will not experience other people's jealousy if they succeed, since others will consider this success as their own. Even if one fails, others will not blame him since they will consider this failure to be their own fault. They will treat him sympathetically. One can also evaluate the degree of friendship of others when he seeks their advice. This will pave the way for future success. This might have been one of the reasons that the Prophet, peace be upon him, his pure progeny, sought other people's advice even though he was very intelligent. Consider the following verse from the Holy Quran. It is part of the mercy of God that thou dost deal gently with them, wert thou severe or harsh-hearted, they would have broken away from about thee. So pass over their faults and ask for God's forgiveness for them and consult them in affairs of moment. Then when thou hast taken a decision, put thy trust in God, for God loves those who put their trust in Him. The Holy Quran, chapter 3, verse 159. It was revealed during the Battle of Uhud. It deals with an important aspect of leadership. A good leader is one who forgives those who make mistakes, but realize their mistake and repent. If a leader does not forgive such people and treats them with harshness, then the people will soon leave him unsupported. He will fail to implement his plans and thus he fails to lead. In this verse, the Prophet is instructed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to consult the people regarding his affairs. The Prophet obviously did not consult the people regarding revelations. Rather, he consulted them regarding the ways in which he implemented divine decrees. In other words, he never consulted the people on legislative issues. Rather, they were consulted on executive issues. For example, in the Battle of Badr, the Muslims set up their camps in a given location by the order of the Prophet, peace be upon him. One of the companions called Hubab Namundar asked, Is camping in this location decreed by God or is it your own opinion? The Prophet said, No. There is no divine ruling on this issue. Then Hubab said, This is not a good place to camp. The Prophet agreed with him. We also read in the Holy Quran, Those who hear kin to their Lord and establish regular prayer, who conduct their affairs by mutual consultation, who spend out of what we bestow on them for sustenance. The Holy Quran, chapter 42, verse 38. Let's go for a quick short break. Stay tuned. <laughs>
Welcome back, my dear viewers. As we can see, the issue of consultation is stressed in this verse that we just read before the break, also right after establishing regular prayers. There are many traditions about consultation from the life of the Prophet and the Immaculate Imams, peace be upon them all. The Prophet, peace be upon him, his pure progeny says, no one has ever been wretched after consultation and no one has become prosperous through being satisfied with his own opinion. Imam Ali, the commander of the faithful, peace be upon him, said, one who will only follow his own opinion will perish, but one who consults with people shares with them in their intellect. The noble prophet said, if your good people are your rulers, your rich ones are generous, and your affairs are carried on in consultation with each other, then the surface of the earth is better for you than its depths. However, if your rulers are your evil ones, your rich are miserly, and your affairs are not carried out in consultation with each other, then being under the earth is better for you than being on it. Imam al-Kadhim said, O oh Hisham, associating with people of religion is nobility in this world and the hereafter. Consulting with an intelligent, sincere advisor is a good fortune and a blessing and guidance. It is a form of divine success. Therefore, beware of acting against the advice of an intelligent, sincere advisor whose advice you seek. For in that lies ruin. Chapters 21 and 22 of Wasa'il al-Shia deal specifically with whom to consult with. We shall present a few traditions from these chapters here. Imam Sadiq quoted on the authority of his noble prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, pure progeny. Imam Sadiq quoted on the authority of his noble father that the prophet of God was asked, What does Hazm mean? He replied, Consulting with those who are well informed and following their advice. Imam Sadiq said that one of the recommendations of the prophet to Imam Ali was, There is no aid more reliable than consultation, and there is no intellect like pondering over the affairs. Imam Al-Baqir said, there are four lines in the Torah, the first of which is as follows. One who does not seek advice regarding his affairs will regret it. Imam Ali said, there is no aid like consultation. Imam Sadiq said, in your affairs only consult with those people who are fearful of God. Imam Sadiq also said, consult with men who are intelligent since they will only advise you to do good. Beware of opposing their advice for opposing the God-fearing intelligent man is a cause of ruin and religion and in this world. Imam Sadiq also said, consultation should be carried out within its limits, otherwise it will be more harmful than beneficial to the one seeking advice. Firstly, the one consulted should be intelligent. Secondly, he should be a free religious man. Thirdly, he should be a sincere friend. Fourthly, when he becomes acquainted with your inner thoughts, his knowledge of it should be like your knowledge of yourself. Undoubtedly, we cannot consult with just anyone. We were advised to consult with those who are intelligent, God-fearing, honest, and trustworthy, and who wish us well. Consulting with some people might cause us harm and deprivation. The commander of the faithful Amir Amin al-Islam in his letter to Malik al-Ashtar tells us whom not to consult with. Do not include in your consultations a miser who turns you away from generosity and threatens you with poverty or in a coward or a coward who renders you weak in your affairs, or a greedy person who makes covetousness for wealth and power accompanied by tyranny seem attractive to you. As stated before, consultation is a means of finding the proper way to do things. It is meant to help us do the right thing. Therefore, we should not consult with wicked, stingy, greedy, or cowardly people. This will not help us if we consult with them. Rather, they will cause misery for us. That is why Imam Sajjad has said, But if you do not have any good advice for him, you should refer him to someone else whom you know and trust his advice yourself. With this, we conclude this episode. Stay tuned for another episode on the Treaties of Rights series. Thank you all for watching, and may Allah hasten in the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi Ajalla Ta'ala Fajr al-Sharif. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh